Hello guys, today I would like to continue study of my supersonic diffuser. Last time I have built invested model and simulated not viscous flow. And today I would like to continue with the viscous flow simulation. So I will save my data as interpolate function for all the surface body and use it as initial conditions for my viscous flow simulation. Once my data is saved, I can go to exit from Fluent. I will create a duplicate copy of my process. Here you also might see another viscous simulations which I performed in order to obtain quite good accuracy and simple geometry. First of all, I will go to edit my geometry. I will select a new sketch and build one line. After, I will split my face into two faces. Like that. Now I have two volumes of simulation. This method which I perform here is one of the simplest methods, but it also gives very good accuracy. After my work here is done, I can exit from Design Modeler and go to the Meshing tool. Here is my model and I have to correct here some options. The face meshing will be applied to all the simulation volume and the edge sizing will be applied separately for the inlet and outlet conditions. For the inlet condition I will use 200 divisions with bias Seventy five. Then I see that my cells are well distributed on the inlet part. And for my outlet, I will select different sizing as well. And do it in a different way. Sometimes this tool is giving troubles, so we have to repeat several times the same option. As you may see, this doesn't result in any action inside the program. Well, okay, now it worked. I will select two edges, number of divisions would be the same, but here I will change the bias, and my bias here will be equal to 100. You have to be really patient with the, with the program, because sometimes it gives error. Well, now my cells will be distributed such a way that some cells will be compressed near the boundary layer on the lower side and the others on the upper side of the boundary layer. Okay, I'm quite satisfied with these options and I will try to generate my mesh.
it looks fine. Also, we can improve a bit the size of cells here in the middle, changing from 5 mm to 4 mm, for example. So, this mesh is looking fine. It has some compressed cells in the boundary layer on the lower part of my body, on the upper part, on the wall, and also some compressed cells where I expect to have normal shock wave. When we are finished with the mesh, we can go to set up the options for the simulation. Here I will use practically same options which I had for my previous in Visit Flow. Ok, some new zones were found. This happens because I changed from one simulation volume into two simulation volumes. In general, it's not a big problem. I will change my turbulence model to Spallertal Mars. And also, I will go to the methods. Here, I change my solution method from first to the second order. And now I will have to read my data from interpolation function which I saved before. So I will go to read my data from fluent interpolation function. When data is read, we can visualize the flow properties. Here we could observe the flow properties from the volume of the previous simulation interpolated. So such a way our solution will converge much faster. I will start my simulation with current equal to 1. I will do 100 steps with this value. And then I will increase my current number to 2. I will pass also several steps, around 100 steps on current equal to. And then I will perform around 4000 steps with the current equal to 3. After the simulation will be finished, I will continue to explain the results. All the simulation in general takes around 30-40 minutes. So my simulation is finishing now. It's uh, in totally more than 4000 iterations and I will be ready to perform my results of simulation. Ok. Flow parameters are visualizing. And now we can talk about them. In general, distribution of the Mach number which we may see on this picture here, is very similar to the flow without boundary layer. One difference which we might observe here is the presence of the boundary layer. Visualization of the boundary layer can be done using the so-called surfaces or the lines which I have been created before. Here we can visualize all these lines and see how they go. So I select these lines 
and display them. These lines are here. This is line number 9, 10, 11 and 12. These lines all are perpendicular to the surface in order to visualize the structure of the boundary layer. I have created these lines same way as I did for the non-viscous flow. Then I can plot data on my lines. For example, this is the distribution on the last on the line 11, distribution of the velocity, recirculation area. I can visualize all the profiles of my velocities here. If you would like to visualize just one of them, you can select just one line and plot. For example, this is profile of the velocity in the line 9 on the fourth surface of my diffuser. Here we can also calculate the thickness of the boundary layer. We just have to write this data to file and process it in some mathematical software or Excel processor. Then we can also visualize the pressure. Contours of static pressure will show us some very interesting behavior of the flow. For example, in the zone where the shock wave is interacting with the boundary layer, we can observe so-called lambda shock wave. If we do this visualization in the other form, like using the lines, we can see the values of constant line of pressure and they will be always perpendicular to the flow wall. These lines are perpendicular to the wall. It means that we have a boundary layer and the viscous flow simulation. This is typical only for the viscous flow. If we zoom another part in our solution, we will see that these lines are also perpendicular to the wall. It means that there is a boundary layer in this region. Well, visualization of the boundary layer is not very simple. To do this visualization, we will have to do uh, uh, visualization of the streamlines inside all the interior interior surface body using very small amount of steps and very big skip of path. And by this we are able to see all the details of the flow picture, of the flow structure. For example, here is recirculation zone because of the flow separation when our normal shock wave is touching the boundary layer. Also, we might observe some flow change of the flow direction here in where we have a free exit of our flow from the simulation volume. If we try to visual visualize in a classical way, we will be able to see our streamlines but unfortunately, in the zone of the flow separation, it will not be possible to observe the vertex. In general, if we go back to the distribution of the Mach number, we can observe that the shock wave angles are very close to invested model and very close to the analytical model as well. But they are a bit bigger than for invested simulation because of the presence of the boundary layer is giving us an extra angle of the inclination of the flow and with this the angle of the shock wave is also growing. We might see that the normal shock wave 
is still perpendicular to the flow and it's stationary. Since my flow passed a lot of simulation steps, you can see here the conversions. The flow is not converging again, same as we had for inviscid flow. This happens because of the presence of the normal shock wave. When our equation system is going from hyperbolic state to elliptic state. Well, nevertheless, we can see the balance of mass. Instead of looking to the residuals, which are not converging, we can see here in the reports, for example, the fluxes balance. Mass flow rate on the inlet, outlet and the stream will be calculated totally and we see that here total is around 1100 and the difference is less than 5 so it means that we have the change of the mass flow rate between inlet and outlet less than 0.5 percent which for my opinion is quite good accuracy so I'm quite satisfied with the results of this simulation and we can assume that simulation is finished even though if the residuals did not converge. Well, with these good results I can produce my report and then compare the results of simulation between analytical model, numerical model for inviscid flow and numerical model for the viscous flow. Thank you for watching.